13 moons. You cost yourself moons. You could have called the mark of the year. <laughs> The oldest trick in the book, just butter them up with a nice bit of uh, highlight stuff and then hit them hard. But uh, Todd Goldstein, the star kangaroo, has been good enough to join us. Just shy of 300 games, he's an All-Australian and a best and fairest winner. And the Kangas, it's been a pretty tough couple of years, Goldie, so we appreciate you coming in and having a chat, not only to us, but your supporting group as well. Oh, thanks for having me on, looking forward to it. How are you feeling? I mean, uh, we want to celebrate your career as well. You're not far off 300 games. For anyone, that's an unbelievable achievement. For a, for a big ruckman that debuted back in 2008, that's a fair effort. Yeah, look, the, the body's feeling pretty good, actually. I, like, the mind, obviously, when you're not going as well, it's a little bit harder, but overall, I'm feeling really good and, and looking forward to hopefully another year or two left. We've all been there. We've all been at teams that have had, you know, down periods of time and it's been a struggle and a battle and sometimes driving to training is hard work and, you know, after a bad loss... How have you stayed motivated in the short term? Look, I, I really enjoy working with the young kids. Like, the, the good thing about having a young group is that they they bring out that exuberance. They, they do, they don't really, I think they don't get caught up in the in the footy side of things and the, the wins and losses as much these days. So I find that the young group, they come excited and, and that drives me to, to want to get better and, and want to try and help them get better as well. So, so has that become your purpose? Because clearly, you know, winning a premiership this year in the last couple of years hasn't been the reason you play, otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing it. So is it about developing the young kids? And, and what about into the future? You, you mentioned, you know, hopefully a year or another two years. It, will that change? Is that what you want to hang around for? Yeah, I'm, for, for me at the moment, you know, I've, I signed on wanting, understanding that we were going through this, this process for the next couple of years. And I was really looking forward to working with Jai Simpkin, Luke Davies, Uniac, Taryn Thomas, players like this that are, are coming through our midfield. And I feel like I've spent you know, the p past 12, 13, 14 years in the midfield, I've got a lot to, to be able to teach them. So that's what I've sort of been really driving to. And I think for a little while there, I was sort of trying to hang on to 300 games. But the way the body's felt this season, you know, I think you know, I'm looking to trying to get to you know, 320, 340, that sort of, that sort of range. For Will myself. it be at the Kangaroos? That is, the interesting thing from the outside is that they have Tristan Cherry that they're committed to. And they go and recruit Callum Coleman-Jones. And then you're not rucking in the manner that you have. I mean, do you think your future is at the Kangaroos? I hope so. I really do, and you know, I, I love this footy club. I've, I've spent 15 years, almost, most of my half, nearly half my life at this club. So I, I do really love the club, and I'd love to play 300 games. I've always said that for this footy club, uh, and you know what, where the club, the direction the club's going in, I don't know. Um, those conversations haven't happened yet for beyond this year. Uh, I know the way I run my team, so to speak, my little circle is that I let play, my manager Tom Petrori take control of talking to the footy club and talking to other clubs if that's what it comes to and, and when he's got something to present to me we'll sit down and, and have a chat and you know that he hasn't come to me yet so as far as I'm aware not a lot of chats beyond this year have happened uh, but I'm definitely motivated to, to keep playing. If it wasn't the Kangaroos then it's just you know, de playing devil's advocate w would it then become about going to a club where a flag that you, know, you were going to give your best chance of a flag. I know it's hard to pick the eyes out of who's going to be good next year. But the Cats have, been, that, the cats have come to you. For, for me, like, like last, like three years ago when I had a decision to make, it was, yes, the footy side is one part, but for me, in, at that point in time, I wasn't ready to move. I, I, I just you know, come, got through a few mental things that I, I'd been struggling with for a few years. I'd finally got myself in a good place. And for me and my family, the best option was to stay at the footy club and help North Melbourne Footy Club. So that was the decision then. Once again, yes, if I, North Melbourne don't offer me a contract or it's not going to be a, a good situation for me, you do take into account whether you want to win a flag, but there's many other, other aspects. And, you know, you sort of weigh, put it all on the table. I weigh it up with my family, with my management, and, you know, we'll make a decision what's going to be best for, for me in the outcome. Yeah, you've gone back into more ruck. You've been in good form, you know, when you went back into the ruck. How did that come about? Did you have, a, have to have a conversation with David Noble and say, I want to get back to playing my best position? No, well, I mean, it, it came just because I think Tristan Sherry went down with his, with his foot injury, so I had to step up then. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, was, I came into the season saying to Noves that I wanted to be flexible. I was happy to play whatever role I could for the team. Um, you know, I think I started the season quite well and then just sort of... I think I got myself in a point where you, know, you work, where you under, sort of start to understand what you need to do in that role and you can sometimes have a little bit of dip. And I think I found myself in that dip, trying to work out, trying to do too much, trying to get involved and trying to find a way to, to impact. I was used to when you see three, four, five goals get kicked against the side, I'm used to being in the, in the centre bounce going, I'm going to impact this. Mm. And for me, I found for a period there I was struggling to work out exactly 
how to impact the game and we weren't getting a lot of the ball inside 50 so it was really hard to have an impact so you know, I've worked really closely with the coaches to to try and work out how to do that uh, but I am enjoying playing a little bit more ruck but I'm still having an impact as a forward. Uh, the, I want to ask you about a couple of younger midfielders so clearly north of you know gone and targeted good young midfielders that's going to be the future of the footy club two of the players under the spotlight the most Jason Horn, Francis and Taron Thomas we'll start with Taron Thomas who's been disappointing this year uh, from his own coach submission I'm sure he would talk about it he was dropped um, how, how is your relationship with him or how do you deal with a younger midfielder like that and where's he gone wrong yeah, look, Taryn's someone I'm actually really close with. We're very, very different people, but I've really tried to, to look after him and, and try and help him as much as I can. I think he responded really well from uh, getting dropped. I think he had 30-odd touches on that in the VFL, so he responded really well to that. And it's just about him. He's understanding what professionalism looks like, how to do it day in, day out, how to keep his work rate up for a whole game. So I think we've seen just how talented. I think he can be you know, Daniel Wells-esque if he, if he really wants to and really wants to put the work in. But it's just about making sure he's doing that consistently and consistently through games. And that's what we're working on. Take, take us inside the walls of the football club then because you, you've copped it from everywhere. The coach has been under pressure. The, the CEO has been under pressure. The players, right, right, right down to your youngest player, everyone's been under the pump. What, what aspects within the club at the moment give you confidence that there's light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I think the, the way the group's bonded together... I think you know it's really easy to, to fracture and, and to fall apart and, and get caught up in all the, the media and everything that's been said about the footy club. But they say, all the young kids especially seem to really focus on what the coaches and what the, what the leaders are telling them. And I think that's really important. The, the training standards are only getting better and better, which, which is something with, you know, I think if the team's struggling and it's not going to improve, you don't see those standards proving everyone wanting to work hard. And, and so I'm still seeing everyone wanting to work hard. It doesn't turn overnight. We understand that we're not playing anywhere near as good as footy as we want to play, but we are working incredibly hard, and I think it will turn. So, how, how do you how do you find the balance as a leader between trying to set standards and hold young guys accountable, and at the same time making sure it's an enjoyable enjoyable environment so that you keep a player like Horn Francis or Taron Thomas? How do you how do you find that balance? Yeah, it's it's always a tricky one, and, and you guys have all been leaders in your own right, your own footy clubs, and I think. For us, it's, it is making sure that we are really cracking down on just those simple things about recovery and, and how to, to carry yourself around the footy club, whether it's been on time to meetings and things like that. Just the really simple things at the moment is making sure everyone's nailing that. There's always plenty of time to have fun when you're in the locker rooms. There's always plenty of downtime to have some fun on the footy field. You know, it's about when we're there to train seriously in main training sessions, you've got to work hard. But there are other sessions we can do to, to have fun and, and enjoy ourselves. So talk to us to this vision of Jason Horn francis who is your number one pick. And, you know, we look at it as old, old you know, much older now, but I looked at it and was worried about the lack of respect that appeared to be given to you as the older statesman of the club. And that is going to be interpreted in the manner that we have. How do you feel when you look at that and what can you tell us about it? Oh, look, that, that's a conversation that happens 100, 200 times a game between players, and obviously this one was caught up with it. But, you know, I understand what Jace is like as a person, and he's an incredibly emotional player at the moment. And I think we look at him as a 22, 23-year-old mm. with his body, the way he plays his game, but he's still an 18-year-old kid, and so his emotions sometimes still get the better of him. So I didn't take any offence to that. I was shocked when I saw that it had been highlighted as much as it has. But, you know... We're, he asked us to try and, when he does have those moments, to try and pull him back in. And that, that's all it was, was trying to get him focused back on task. And, you know, we, we had a good conversation. We've had a few conversations since then about it. And, and there's, no, there's no issue from my end. Um, I understand that, you know, he can, he can lose a little bit at times with his with emotions, but it's about reeling him back in and teaching that 18-year-old kid how to manage those is, is a skill that he's got to learn. Has that been a struggle for him, to be able to accept food back in the heat of the moment? I think, in general, he, he can let his emotions get the better of him at times. I think we've seen some of the footage, and I think the footage has been highlighted, that mm. he can get a bit caught up in his own head. And I think all of us as players have gone mm. through those periods where you do get stuck in your own head. And, you know, he's got to work on his body language and things like that. And he's well aware that these issues, and he's openly said to the team in meetings that, you know, when he is like that, go back at him, get him, pull him back into line, because that's the only way he's going to get better. What, what about the coach, mate? So you've, you've played in eras where you were probably a bit more a part of the old school mentality and, and now the new school mentality, where the coach 
gave a spray and felt like he had to apologise for the group. Did, did you feel like that was something he didn't need to do at I, the time? I didn't think he needed to apologise. I mean, you know, I, I, I started my career with Danny Laidley and, and boy, could, could we cop some sprays there. So, <laughs> so, so what, what Noves did after the Brisbane game was, yeah. you know, I mean, we just lost by 100-odd points. He's emotional, playing against the side that he used to be footy manager for. It was a big night for him. Yeah. And as players, we didn't step up. So, so what specifically did he apologise for? I think it was just the manner he spoke and, and I think the, probably the lack, the lack of probably coaching in that. I think it was probably just, it was just the heat of the motion. It was all emotive. It wasn't really trying to teach. And that's what we're, try, we're trying to do with the young boys. We try and teach them more. And to Nobs' credit, since, since then, he has definitely changed the way he's gone about things and tried to, to work out how this group is going to learn best. Because, yes, a few of us older boys, me, Zeebs, Cunners, we can all cop a spray. We're used to that. We've grown up with that. Uh, the younger kids these days don't quite respond as well. So no fractures, no dissent, no young group, you know, an old group, this, this division that you know, is reported, that the, the coach, the players are... I mean, you hear all these things. And again, believe us, I've been through it with a, with a team that I was involved in and I heard all the outside noise and sometimes the reality is different. You, you're really confident that you're all united? And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean... I'm not sure about the older and younger guys. For me, the one thing I've loved about the North Melbourne Footy Club since I've been here, there's never been a segregation of groups. Everyone's very inclusive, and you know this playing group is is very much the same. That you know I've got such a good relationship with the young boys as as well as the older guys. So no, I haven't seen any fractures like that. It did seem a bit uh, seem a bit odd the timing of list management staff leaving. You know, key list management staff, about three of them leaving virtually in the same week. Yeah, how did that sort of impact? What was your thoughts as a senior experienced player on that? For us, you didn't really notice as much, especially with COVID. A lot of the staff haven't been around, so we haven't seen a lot of those mm. staff members around too much. And I don't think it... I don't know if... I, you know, I heard Brady say that it wasn't actually the same week. It had been coming on for, for a few weeks. So, you know, I take that on face value. I've got no reason to not believe what Braid says. And I think, you know, obviously... You, know, you you want to keep as many good people as you can and, and all three of them were, were great North Melbourne people and, and had a great impact on the club but you know it, it was time it's obviously time for change and I've confidence the club will, will get some new guys in in charge to take us forward you've had the night up in Shepparton. Uh, went to, is that the whole group that went up and had a night up there and yeah so the, the whole playing group went over I think I think Jack Zebel was the only one that didn't stay in the night at I think four fractures in his face probably was a fair <laughs> and surgery the next day was Thought a fair was, tough. was a fair excuse to, to drive home that night and get ready for his surgery. But yeah, it was you know, it was you don't get with COVID, the last couple of years we haven't really had much time to spend together as a group. You know, even you know, the end of season celebrations, things like that. I think yeah. last year was through Zoom and things like that because we weren't allowed to, to catch up. So So it was a cans around the campfire and just having a good old chat? Yeah, look, it was, it was some, some good chats happened. And I think, you know, the, the boys came out of it really well. Obviously, we've had a few days off now, so haven't seen each other too much since. But, you know, I think any opportunity to spend some time together away from the footy environment, talk a little bit of footy, but also just talk about get to know your teammates and, and what they are like away from footy. They can be really impactful. Grant Tom Thomas took us to Bonnie Doon in 2006. Ooh, I, think we, I think we came out and won the next four. Oh, or there you go. <laughs> hey, Goldie, we're unabashed fans. You've been doing this for a long, long time. As I said, 286 games into your 15th season. It's a credit to yourself. Yep, and spot on. Um, We wish you well for the rest of this year and whatever may come in the years to come. And we appreciate you coming in tonight. Oh, thanks for having me on, boys. Todd Goldstein. Yeah.